I am Jessie. I'm a cannabis nurse and the founder of Marijuana Mommy, and you're watching Patients Are the Proof, where we talk about the real health benefits of cannabis. Today, I'm talking with Riley Cote. Riley is a former NHL hockey player who spent four seasons with the Philadelphia Flyers, where he was known as the enforcer. After retiring, Riley founded the Hemp Heals Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting hemp as a viable renewable resource. Cote also sits on the Pennsylvania Hemp Industries Council Board, and his role as the NHL League Ambassador for Athletes for Care allows him to continue pursuing his passion to help athletes find safe, non-toxic ways to attain relief, manage pain, and guide them to self-healing. Right on. Well said. <laughs> awesome. Riley, thank you so much for talking to me this morning. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. I am a hockey mom. My 11-year-old plays ice hockey, so oh, no. I'm very thrilled to chat with you. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about how you got involved in the hemp and cannabis industry. How did, how did you go from the NHL to hemp? Uh, well, I think it stems back earlier uh, in my life. I had a relationship with cannabis since I was 15 years old. Uh, early on, not really understanding it in a very recreational setting most of the time. And then I think as I turned... Um, into the professional ranks and started fighting you know, within the hockey game. I started realizing the therapeutic and medicinal values. So I, you know, I, I think I had a pretty pretty good grasp on cannabis. Um, you know, just at least from the way it made me feel and increased my quality of life and helped with the anxiety and sleep. Um, but then as I retired in 2010, at the age of 28, I, I really kind of. Uh, started learning about the, 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 the entire cannabis plant, you know, more from an industrial hemp side and looked at it as a, you know, as, as a superfood and learned about the nutritional profile of the hemp seed and mm. started transitioning from animal proteins to plant-based proteins and then started just l learning more about um, the rest of the plant, you know, the textiles, the history of, you know, hemp and cannabis, you know, learning about prohibition. And then as I started learning about this, I guess became extremely passionate about this other side of cannabis and started dipping my head down, you know, the, the rabbit holes of science, learning about, you know, THC and the discovery of it, and then started learning about non-psychoactive cannabinoids and everything kind of just made sense, you know, and then, um, you know, in about 2013 or so, I started getting into the CBD oil and it was kind of pre, pre uh, two, 2014 farm bill when, the, you know, the CBD products kind of, you know, came on the scene and exploded. So I started, you know, using those mindfully to kind of, uh, you know, prevent and, and mitigate some of the damage I had caused or, or, or I might have caused, um, you know, through my hockey career and, and you know, fighting specifically. Mm -hmm. So, you know, doing all those things, it just kind of, uh, it made sense to, to, you know, to stand up for it, to be an advocate. Um, I started Hemp Heals Foundation. That was really mainly kind of the umbrella of cannabis, showing all the different versatile uses of cannabis and hemp, not just the medicine or the recreational side. Um, and then that eventually kind of evolved as I started speaking publicly. It was evolved more into using my sports uh, platform and background to, to promote, you know, cannabis as a wellness tool and, you know, just normalizing cannabinoids through sports. And it's really kind of taken off, you know, it's been interesting, you know, cannabis and sports five, 10 years ago, couldn't coexist in the same sense. And then now it's, you know, it's like, you know, looked upon as, you know, the ultimate recovery tool. So interesting times for sure. It's, it, it's amazing. And you you have a great point there. Like it's, it's so, I mean, our sports players really, really need the access to this plant. And from what I've read, the NHL has, they're not really too receptive as cannabis as a medicine, but they're not as restrictive as many of the other professional sports. What was your experience like with using cannabis in the NHL? Did you, were you actively using while you were playing? I was, yeah, and I've been actively. I was actively using cannabis since, uh, you know, since I was 15 years old through junior hockey, all through, all the way through, you know, the minor league ranks, um, and then the NHL as well. Um, in the NHL, we did get tested three to four times a year, and um, you know, we got maybe a 24-hour notice on it. But I would have tested positive uh, every single time. It was the risk I ran because I knew the drug test was really, um, if you tested positive, it had to be really, really high amounts of THC. But the, what they were looking for was other street drugs on that side of the drug test. And then on the other side is performance enhancing drugs, uh, in which cannabis isn't, you know, it was just a you know, banned substance. So um, 
you know, so I don't know anybody that's really um, ever been thrown into the to the substance abuse program for strictly THC. It's it's usually in a combination of other street drugs or alcohol if they do go that way. But um, as far as a guy getting tested positive for THC, um, it doesn't happen. You know what I mean? It has to be such a high amount that you have to you literally have to ingest you know a thousand milligrams at, at once. You know what I mean? Way to, too much. To, yeah, way too much. So, um, and I think they do that you know to you know, on purpose because they, you know, they, they know, but they can't not test because it's still federally illegal in the U S and it's an international sport. And, um, you know, there, you know, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of politics and there's just a lot of liability involved in that. So for, for them, you know, they, they, they probably see the benefits. I mean, probably within teams and organizations, they're probably doing it quietly, but they're not, you know, they're not allowing their players to legally, you know, because, uh, it's, it's it's complicated, you know what I mean? It's federally okay. in the U.S. You can't you can't just say north of the border it's fair game, and then south of the border, you know what I mean? You're you're, you're on opioids and sleeping pills. So, uh, you know what I mean? It's it's it sounds crazy, but it, it it is crazy. You know, it is crazy that we're we're in a day and age we're fighting for something as simple as cannabis. Where and then on, and the other side of it is that we're giving people synthetic heroin and, and sleeping pills and, and muscle relaxers and all these different things to manage just the very things that we could be managing with cannabis. So uh, I mean, a lot of work to be done yet. Yeah, I mean, you look at Canada, 12 year medical cannabis program. Now they're gone full wreck, but I mean, most people don't understand it. You know, most, most Canadians didn't even know there was a medical cannabis program. You know, it's not advertised. The science isn't promoted, you know, yeah, I was surprised when I when I heard uh, like the numbers of people that were in Canada's program, it, medical program. It seems very low. Yeah, very low. And again, most doctors wouldn't even bring it up in a consultation. You have to bring it up. It's not advertised. You know, cannabis isn't, isn't the you know the first line of defense. It's 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 reactionary medicine, the last resort almost. You know, still. So, I mean, to me, you need to change that model. You know, to me, cannabis is preventative. It's it's being proactive. It's 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 all it's all the good things on the front end of it you know we don't have to get so sick to, to use cannabis and mm -hmm. feel guilty doing it you know i think we need to we need to lose that thinking we need to be more proactive with our health and you know if we can remove some of these ailments through managing our stress and anxiety and our sleep and, and pain inflammation um, with a sustainable tool to me a lot of these things down the road don't manifest stress is a killer you know anxiety manifests into depression and if you don't manage those things i mean you know negative things start happening and, and you know cannabis is a tool and i think that's what needs to be clear too is that it, it's, it's it's one tool in the toolbox i mean it needs to be in conjunction with uh you know other parts of wellness you know you know meditation yoga those things offer a high anti-anxiety um you know help with inflammation and you know and, and nutrition and diet i mean it's like your, your, your diet could be either inflammatory or anti-inflammatory so you know we, we lean on the cannabis plant as, as a kind of a substitute for pharma but I think the bigger picture is that cannabis can be introduced into a daily regimen that is far, far more sustainable than people that are living off, you know, alcohol and caffeine, all these stimulants and these depressants and all these things go up and down all day long. Processed food. Just, just to cope, just to cope, you know. Um, and, I see, and I've seen it, you know, and, I, and I've lived it, you know. It's, it's, it's an interesting world we live in because, um, you know, everyone wants to sell something to somebody. And most of it is garbage. And you look yeah. at the food industry and you look at, you know, the things that are legal and then people don't think of them as problems because they're legal. But, you know, people are dependent on caffeine. People are dependent on alcohol. You know what I mean? And, and, and there's a lot of destruction that comes along with alcohol specifically. I mean, it's a dark drug and, and you know, it makes people do a lot of really bad things, you know. And uh, you look at, you know, throughout history is like cannabis has been called, you know, the gateway drug. And... <laughs> That could be further from the truth. I mean, it's the gateway to wellness, but I mean, alcohol is the gateway drug, you know? I mean, cannabis is an exit drug. People get off opioids and alcoholism with cannabis, you know? So it, there's so much to be, to, 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 for, the, for the mass public to understand, you know what I mean? We haven't even scratched the surface. Again, this information isn't coming on, you know, the CNN and Fox News of the world because, because that's not part of the agenda, you know what I mean? The part of the agenda is keeping people confused and, and unsure and you know trusting of the establishment and you know, i mean not going against it or you know you know finding a better solution that's natural yeah. exactly against you know the business model of uh, uh the current business model that we are engaged in right now mm -hmm. yeah, you're totally speaking my language when you 
when you um, elaborate that people need, uh, you know, a, a whole lifestyle change often, you know, cannabis, I say this all the time, cannabis isn't a magic bullet, it's not going to magically fix people. But just like you said, it's a tool to try to attain wellness. And a lot of times when people are, you know, suffering immensely, it gives them that opportunity to, like you said, to embrace meditation or yoga and to get on the track of a healthy lifestyle, which can sure. totally transform. Um, and you mentioned how cannabis is protective and that's absolutely amazing. That's such an important aspect of the plant that a lot of people don't realize. Do you feel like it was protective for you for all your time in the NHL? Because you, you took a lot of hard hits. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know what, I honestly, I honestly attribute my mental health now um, to be, to using cannabis when I played and then, you know, and then when I retired, still using it and mindfully using CBD oil. So like, uh, I see a lot of guys that weren't even in a fraction of the fights that I was in and took, you know, a fraction, not even nearly the amount of, the amount of head trauma that I've taken. Not that I'm, you know, being that like that and, and counting blows, but like, um, I, I, just, I just know from, you know, the, 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 the information and the studies that I've read on, you know, cannabis as a neuroprotectant or cannabinoids as neuroprotectants, there's got to be something there. There's, yeah. You know, there has to be a correlation because if you look at children with epilepsy and autism and you see the response, the cognitive response to CBD and some of these other uh, phytocannabinoids, uh, all the way through concussion, TBI, CTE people getting, you know, great results from it and the ones that are mindfully doing it. And then all the way up to like, uh, to uh, Parkinson's, dementia, mm -hmm. Alzheimer's, and those are all brain, you know, those are all brain um, diseases or disease state um, and the cannabis is helping with. So I can say, you know, like for, again, for guys that uh, I've looked around and seen guys struggling, you know, that, you know, left the game with a concussion and they're like a really dark place. You know, again, cannabis is a very, very valuable, val val valuable tool that can, again, get people kind of back on that right track to engage in other things that promote wellness. You know, like some people really struggle with getting out of bed. And if you, if you can use something that can get you out of bed, well, maybe that, you know, maybe you can maybe you can walk a little bit further, you know, you do a, a mindful movement a little bit longer. So therefore, you're, you know, you, you're feeling better. And, you know, that's, you know, it's cannabis can be considered a crutch, you know, crutches help people walk. And then until you can walk, you don't need it anymore. You know what I mean? Some people can use it until they, you know, remove, remove the pain necessary or the anxiety, but some people it's forever. You know, some disease states, you're going to have to use it forever because I mean, the pain is so great and the inflammation is so real and the sleep is struggling. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, to me, it's like, there's, there's different spectrums of cannabis use and um, you know, it needs to be respected just like any other substance. It is a substance, especially the THC and the, you know, the psychoactive, a compound in cannabis like it, it, people over can consume a easily. lot yeah. you know, easily especially yeah. with uh edibles mm -hmm. so you have to understand what you're doing you know all cannabis isn't the same five milligrams mm -hmm. isn't the same as 100 milligrams you know and 100 milligrams so is important you know what i mean and that's really important because you can have a really bad experience um and i, and I hear it all the time it's like yeah i got really anxious or i yes. fell asleep or and it's, it's, and it's probably because you over consume especially the mm -hmm. thc it doesn't take it doesn't take much for people that don't consume cannabis to, to over consume so, yeah, so easy less is more I think low and slow I mean everyone kind of says it I mean it's it's so true I mean me, me, even being after consuming cannabis for 21 years it's like I know my dose mm -hmm. you know what I mean I know what I can do I can I can consume throughout the day and be fully functional creative mm -hmm. focus and clear um, but I'm also not you know, I'm not smoking like I was when I was 16 years old. <laughs> really no intention or purpose, you know, mm -hmm. not understanding it. So you know, there, there is a huge understanding and, and educational component that comes along with it. You know, the dosing is key. That changes your experience. Absolutely. You know, the microdoses, if you can microdose even, you know, for people that are anti-THC, at least get into the CBDs, like, you know, like it, it does change the game. Yeah. You know, I personally microdose and it's, you know, yeah it's totally a game changer. Absolutely. I mean, you can experience the benefits without those, you know, mind altering side effects, but I was the same way when I first became a patient, I was very reluctant for so many reasons, a lot of the stigma, but I believed it made me anxious. I'm like, Oh no, I've, I've tried marijuana. I know what it is. And I had a horrible anxiety attack and I can't use it. But just like you said, I didn't understand dosage. And I also didn't understand strains and, you know, all of the things that patients really need to learn about. Sure. You brought up a great um, point, and this is, I think, a lot of what your foundation does is 
you know, besides the medical aspects, besides the health aspects, hemp and cannabis plants offer so much opportunity in, in a variety of industries. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, that's, that's a huge part of it. So Athletes for Care is, I mean, it's got a bunch of different arms uh, on it. Uh, you know, the, the main was kind of like creating a, a locker room outside the locker room, like a, a support system for guys that are struggling. But um, mm -hmm. part of it, part of it, what you see is not just physical injuries, or mental health issues or addiction issues that guys struggle with. It's kind of like a lack of purpose. It's something to grab onto. And I think um, the cannabis space, especially on like, you know, the, the, the medical side, like that, you know, when you're dealing with patients and and seeing how ca cannabis affects people in such a positive way, you, you realize the true nature of how healing this plant is. And it, and it really does give so much opportunity if you, if, you, if, you, if you believe in it enough and see it enough, you know what I mean? So I think introducing, you know, the cannabis plant um, to guys, not just as a you know, healing mechanism for them to, to deal with their issues, but also to, to explore um, a, as a business opportunity, you know what I mean? And, and you get into something that you love and it's always, about he it's always about healing and giving back, whether, you know, it's direct, your direct, you know, a, you know patient to, you know, the doctor or, or, or whatever, or, or if you're like just in, in the space of providing good medicine or if you're in the in, you know, industrial hemp space and you're a farmer, I mean, everything is good because it's, it, it's just so positive for the environment, so positive for local economics and then public health. I mean, it's, it's so clear um, that this plant is, is, is healing. So um, for us, is, is, is introducing this not just as a, you know, a plant to, and an alternative to heal, but guess what? Here's a, here's a great opportunity. This is like the best time to be alive. You know, we're living amongst, you know, some of the greatest times ever. You know, and, and this is all for the greater good of all people. So why not hop on the bandwagon and, and be a part of it in some capacity? Use your skill set. I think the cannabis space overlaps into so many different skill sets. I mean, you're you're a nurse. I mean, obviously at one point you you didn't use cannabis in your practice. You know, teaching it's very and, resistant. You know, that was that was back in the tool, in the toolbox, and, and and you know you can do your thing. Lawyers, um, you know, creative arts. I mean, it doesn't matter what you you know what you're good at. You can kind of intersect that with you know, the cannabis space and healing really mm -hmm. so that's a huge part of it is it's identity and purpose too you guys struggle so much ego in sport i can imagine know? after like retiring it must be a really a whole different life life you know a different lifestyle it's got to be big yeah. changes it, it really is it re really is because again everyone kind of knows you for what you did your job your whole life and all of a sudden you're not that anymore like you're mm -hmm. kind of like a husband you're, you know it's like that was in the past so guys struggle with like who they are and I actually want to bring up a point on your last thing, your last thing you mentioned about uh, the anxiety with THC. Um, what, what I've learned too is that the, the prohibition is kind of, well, it did drive all the grows indoors, you know, underground, right? So all these growers naturally were growing high THC strains, high THC this, right? And, and naturally in, in nature, the, the hemp plant is a, a kind of more balanced. It's a lower, little bit lower THC, higher CBD. Um, so what happened was like this, this, this imbalance in the cannabis plant, high THC, low CBD. And this kind of, this model is kind of transferred to the medical model, which is like, it's not very natural and it's, it's not very balanced. Um, so again, some patients, even if you know it's organically grown and it's, you know, all these different things are great. Like, guess what? Like too much THC does have adverse side effects so you know either consume less thc or bring in more cbd to kind of like balance out what you're consuming because um there again there is this kind of misunderstanding of this whole plant like naturally you found in nature it's like there was so much more balance where you wouldn't have these like high 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 amounts of thc where you're like freaking out like 80 percent to 90 percent thc bonkers yeah you know what i mean so <clears throat> Um, yes, it, it's created all these different delivery methods and, and you know, extreme potent, potent uh, medicine for certain conditions. That's great. But I think for like, if you're just going to consume it, um, thinking that you're consuming the same exact stuff that, you know, nature kind of provided without any side effects, I think that's where people get really kind of lost in it. And they'd be like, wow, I thought, you know, there's people smoking all the time. How come I felt like that? Well, guess what? <laughs> you consumed like a lot of THC and no CBD to balance it. So. Yeah, that's a good point. CBD is so, so, so important. I always encourage people to add at, at least, you know, one to one, but I do way more CBD than THC personally. And I've noticed a massive difference in, you know, how I feel, my inflammation, my anxiety levels. Um, but yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent, excellent point.
Yeah, thanks. No, I think it's this is not talked about enough. I think, you know, the, the anxiety from cannabis comes up a lot more than I would like it to. And I'm just thinking, geez, I'm like, come on, guys. Like, this is supposed to be anti-anxiety if you do it right. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been using it my whole life and it's like calmed me down. You know what I mean? There, there's, there's certainly moments that I, you know, had freaked out because I overconsumed, you know, especially with edibles early on in my life. But like, <laughs> come on, you know what I mean? Like that needs to be like, this needs to be taught from within the medical cannabis programs. You know what I mean? And like, yes. you know, what it is touched on, but there's not nearly enough CBD in the medical cannabis programs, in my opinion. I it's agree. All, all, you know, mostly uh, purchased through industrial hemp, which is great. But I mean, like if you're a dispensary, like you get, you better have a ton of CBD. Cause you know, that's what people really are looking for. A lot, of, a lot of people don't want the psychoactive nature of cannabis, you know? You're Especially right. It's hard. Get older. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's it. It's a good point also that CBD can kind of help counteract that THC induced anxiety and balance it out a little, which I don't think people realize, but you're right. It's the programs are severely lacking in high CBD strains. Like our, I mean, our New Jersey program here is is really suffering right now from, uh, you know, not enough cannabis overall. But I went to the dispensary the other day and there were no CBD strains at all, which is just, it's just terrible. heartbreaking. Yeah, really, really heartbreaking for people that depend on it. But, yeah. you know, thank God for hemp-based and industrial hemp-based CBD, because at least there's something out there that people can access. Um, so what do you, you know, what do you tell people when they're, obviously can benefit from, from cannabis-based medicine, but they're super scared and reluctant. What would be your, you know, advice, words of encouragement for them? Yeah, I mean, generally the hang-up is the THC, the psychoactive component, right? So that's kind of always what's been like dark around cannabis. So I just, I just say that, well, guess what? I mean, you can consume cannabis products without that psychoactive effect that mimic kind of everyday products that we consume um across the board you know from capsules to you know tinctures to to transdermal patches uh suppositories the whole bit so it's i mean it's it mimics traditional medicine there's no psychoactivity so what's there to be afraid of yeah. and on the hemp side of things you can say well guess what hemp is legal now and, and and you know federally legal in the u.s and and this is just a derivative of a non-psychoactive it's got to be grown below 0.3 percent thc so you know i think if anyone's hung up it's always the thc that hangs, you know, that, that's the hang up. So, you know, if you can provide a solution with the THC, that's, that seems to be the angle that I've, you know, had success with. Oh, that's great. I, me too. It's the get your toes wet with CBD, see how that does. And then, you know, a lot of times people need to add a little THC, but yeah. CBD is a great steps. way to start. <laughs> so where can people find you? Where can they connect with you? Yeah, I'm on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Riley Coyote, um, R-I-L-E-E-C-O-I-O-T-E. Um, athletesforcare.org. Um, I have a, actually I have a hemp derived uh, CBD product line called called Body Check Wellness. Body awesome. Check with a C H E K. Body uh, Check Wellness. Bodycheckwellness.com and then uh, hempfuelsfoundation.com. But um, yeah, I, I'm around. I mean, I'm I'm in, in and on the, the Philly area, and you know my hub is you know Pennsylvania, Jersey, I guess you'd say. And uh, but I, you know I, I travel abroad and. Just try and spread the good word as much as they can. No, I appreciate it. I personally am very, very grateful for all you do. And I know that so many patients everywhere are too, because we need voices like yours to, you know, really be heard. So thank you. Thank you. No problem. That's, uh, that's the least I can do. Awesome. It was so great talking to you this morning and I really, really appreciate your time. All right. No problem. You have a great and I'll time. link to everything down below. Okay. Sounds all good. Right. Thank Thanks, you. Riley. Bye-bye.